Hi, thank you for watching this birth chart reading on Blue Ivy Carter. I thank you for listening and watching. If you would like your own birth chart reading or a birth chart reading for your own children, contact me on my website, lamartownsintero.com. So I'm using two different sources for Blue Ivy's birth chart uh, this morning. And so the first source that I'm using is thehoroscope.co. And I'm also using astrotheme.com. So, uh, you know, the internet uh, sites that her birth date was, is uh, Ju January 7th, 2012. So, um, and you can Google that to uh, confirm yourself. So, being born on January 7th, 2012, that makes Blue Ivy a sun in Capricorn. So, the sun is our vitality for life. It rules our self-confidence. It also rules our connection to our life purpose and our higher self. So, this tells me as a Capricorn myself, a December-born Capricorn, though, there is a slight difference between December and January-born Capricorns. December-born Capricorns have that kind of fiery Sagittarius essence to them january capricorns are much more cool calm collected laid back chill not so fiery right so this tells me that blue ivy is going to be you know and we've already seen that she's a very serious child you know almost like a, a grown up uh a grown woman in a, a little child's body at times probably you know capricorns sun and capricorns especially of those types of people especially those types of children all right because the sun also rules children okay so um, and make our connection to children. So she will also have a very um, stern, probably, and serious connection to her own children. She might be a very strict parent when she grows up. Uh, but nonetheless, she's going to be a workaholic, probably, with her son in Capricorn. Um, she is going to be someone who is a leader, uh, probably. Not a follower at all. Uh, Sun in Capricorn, we have to remember that Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So Saturn rules, you know, work, work ethic, the past, karma, debt, weight, illness. Okay, it also rules our career, our profession, our status in society. So these are going to be the things that, uh, you know, Blue Ivy seeks and strives for in her life. Um, now, this could be something that is uh, innate within her, obviously, or this could also be influenced by her family, her parents, such and so forth. Because Capricorns do tend to, Sun and Capricorns do, do tend to be influenced by family in in that aspect so especially the father because uh saturn also rules the connection to our father so i imagine that jay-z will probably teach blue ivy um and implement you know certain uh things in blue ivy to help with business and to help foster her own career and to help her succeed and to create her own kind of lane in in in, in society and her status in society um i feel also that she might strive to also kind of create her own name uh aside from her family like she might strive to and probably will succeed in creating her own thing separate from her family creating her own identity i want to say separate from her family with her son in capricorn okay very serious though very astute um child let's look at what her moon is in now you know on the horoscope.co it says her moon is in gemini it doesn't always the moon sign isn't always correct on this website so i don't always use the moon sign on this website um the moon sign is such a tricky thing to pinpoint you really have to know the time and place that you were born all right uh, in order to really pin down your moon sign. Now, it does say that Blue Ivy was born in New York here on astrotheme.com. So, I'm going to go with the moon sign that is also says the time she was born was 8.23 p.m. So, I'm going to go with the moon sign on astrotheme.com, which it says her moon is in Cancer. Interesting thing here going on because Cap Capricorn and Cancer are polar opposite zodiac signs. So, Cancer is actually ruled by the moon. So, this is actually a pretty good placement in terms of overall astrology, overall kind of natal chart. But the overall kind of polar oppositeness of both her sun and moon kind of creates um, dichotomies at times. Kind of creates... Uh, I almost want to say chaos at times within Blue Ivy herself, like um, the need to control the emotions, but also the need to let the emotions uh, do their thing, to let the emotions, you know, um, 
Oh, first of all, to acknowledge the emotions, you know, the the moon is our, our emotions, our inner self, okay? Cancer is ruled by the moon. So, you know, the moon rules our connection to our, you know, family, our roots, our foundation, okay? It also rules our instinctual behavior. So, you know, this is meant, might be why Blue Ivy s sometimes seems to be so emotional, so, uh, um, so especially like emotional outbursts i'm hearing emotional outbursts so she may have emotional outbursts and i think it's that capricorn sun uh cancer moon capricorn is ruled by saturn uh cancer is ruled by the moon two totally polar opposite zodiac signs whereas saturn is more so focused on getting the work done no excuses doesn't care about emotions cancer is more involved in emotions the emotional aspect of work the emotional aspect of everything around it because the moon sign placement is also you know this you know how we deal emotionally with our day-to-day -day life you know our the uh how we function emotionally in our immediate surroundings so this tells me that she takes things in very deeply. She's very sensitive. Very, very sensitive. Also very acutely aware of her surroundings. She can feel her surroundings deeply. And that may also cause the outburst. You know, once again, it's 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 uh, the emotion. So, uh, at times, Capricorn isn't always the best at expressing their emotions and pinpointing their emotions and dealing with their emotions. Uh, so, it can be hard and difficult for her, especially when she's around people who don't know how to foster those emotions as well within her. That cancer, who don't know how to speak to that cancer moon. Now, I believe Beyonce's moon is in Scorpio, so... That's a good connection right there. I believe Beyonce is really good probably at keeping her calm, you know, cooling her down, you know, chilling her out. Blue Ivy, it's okay. I don't know what Jay-Z's moon is in, um, but she needs, you know, as, especially as a child, she needs people who are able to foster that emotion, emotional side within her because the Capricorn sun struggles sometimes, I think, with that Cancer moon, all right? Now, this can also at times cause the sun and the moon to... Um, work uh, opposing to one another once again. So whereas Saturn, you know, Capricorn wants to focus on the task at hand, Cancer, the moon can sometimes be preoccupied with working through a certain emotion, you know, that may not even be necessarily involved with the task at hand. So that is kind of a, an opposition dichotomy that could happen with Blue Ivy. You know, it's all about, you know, controlling those emotions, learning to control the tide within, because the moon rules the tides of the ocean, right? So, you know, it's all about controlling the tides within um, and being able to tap into that energy in a productive manner. Um, you know, cancers are really good at home, uh, home-based projects. So she may be a type of person who, as she gets older, she may like to do home-based projects. She may like to paint her room, decorate her room. Maybe that brings her solace. It's something productive. The Capricorn side, you know, the Capricorn side likes to be productive, but it's also an emotional kind of thing for her too. So it's also speaking to that cancer moon. So that's good. Now, let's look at her ascendant. Now, it says on Astro Theme that her ascendant, interesting, is in Virgo. Now, Beyonce is a Virgo, so I found that very interesting. Her rising sign is Virgo. My rising sign is Virgo, too, actually. So, anyways. um, So, her rising sign is Virgo, so she has that extra Earth element going on. Now, the rising sign is the first house, which is the ascendant sign. They all mean the same thing. Rising sign, first house, ascendant. So the rising sign is our, our physical appearance, how we start things, the first impressions that we make. Okay, it's also, you know, the self-image. It's our self-image. So very well put together. Blue Ivy, you know, on the outside, um, you know, always has a need, especially as she gets older, she's going to have a, uh, a want and a need to always control her emotions. Um, I do feel like we're going to see her get older and start to really control her emotions, you know, um, and start to become more business-like almost you know virgos are very preoccupied with their money and their um you know their financial status you know they're um very analytical people so she's probably very analytical always in her mind maybe always talking back always second guessing stuff you know well why do i have to do that why why is it like that what does that mean? You know, always asking questions. Virgo's ruled by Mercury. So Mercury rules communication, intellect, the mind. So, you know, um, Virgo's the type of, of, of person, especially Virgo rising, who, you know, they need all the facts. Just give me the facts. Give me what I need to know. Uh, you know, give me, you know, one, two, three, A, B, C, you know, and, and I can do it. You know, Virgos are those types of people. Um, but they 
are sometimes too analytical. Virgo rising can sometimes come off as too analytical, too judgmental at times. So, you know, Capricorn Sun with a Virgo rising um, can make for a very practical person, definitely, especially when it comes to business endeavors and dealing with the public. But practicality isn't always the answer. Sometimes you have to let that Cancer Moon shine, right? So, um, but in order to let the Cancer Moon shine, you have to have the Cancer Moon in check. So it's really important that, you know, that Cancer Moon really be in check with, with Blue Ivy. But Virgo Rising, once again, gives her an element of groundedness, an element of, okay, I know where I'm going, I know what I want to do, um, you know, uh, and... You know, I just need all the elements to come together to make it happen, you know, and a Virgo is the type of person who is a planner. So she's definitely a planner. Um, she likes to plan things very organized. So she might be very organized. I see her being very organized in her room, you know, uh, the dolls go over here, you know, this goes over here, you know, this, you know, you tuck this underneath here, like, you know, that kind of person. Um, and I feel like if anything's out of place, she might get a little bit upset. Virgo risings can be that way. They like things in a particular order, but at the same time, they can also sometimes be messy because you can't keep your whole life in order in every area. So, um, she can also be maybe a bit controlling at times. <laughs> she can um, probably at times also be hard to pin down because, you know, Virgo rising, that Mercury energy is just, um, can be all over the place at times. So when it's not focused, when it's not, um, you know, focused on precision, focused on, on per perfecting something, um, it can be a little bit all over the place. So once again, you know, learning to uh, utilize her energies um, in a productive manner because Mercury can also be a very kind of anxious, um, angsty energy too. So, all right, let's look further into her birth chart. Now I'm going to move on to uh, the horoscope.co because while the moon sign isn't always correct, the rest of the placements are always dead on accurate. So, her Mercury is in Sagittarius, and my Mercury is in Sagittarius as well. So Mercury, like I was saying, rules communication, intellect, and mind. This is how we communicate with people. This is how we formulate our thoughts. This is how we, you know, start things. This is how um, we come up with concepts and ideas. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. So Jupiter is all about expansion, you know, expansion of the mind, expansion of knowledge, um, you know, the ability to be tolerant of other people and, you know, other cultures and society and different ideologies and, you know, things like that. You know, this is also our personal philosophies and our religious beliefs. So, you know, Sagittarius, Mercury and Sagittarius can be someone who can be a bit all over the place in terms of their thought, in terms of their communication. They can have a lot of, a lot of side conversations. This is the type of person who... Um, We'll tell a story, but, you know, we'll also tell five other stories in between. Um, but this is also someone who's super di dynamic in the things that they do and the, the ideas that they come up with. So she's very, very dynamic. She is, uh, you know, a deep thinker. She is someone who seeks to um, expand on her knowledge at all times. Uh, with that Mercury and Sagittarius, this is also someone who can be very witty. All right. So she can be very witty. Um, once again, she can be a fast talker, fast thinker, because Mer Mercury and Sagittarius tend to be fast talkers, fast thinkers, as you can see. Um, you know, so, now the thing with Mercury and Sag is that they can be really good at starting a lot of things, because remember, these people have a lot of different ideas, a lot of different inspirations also coming from, from different avenues for Mercury and Sagittarius. Mer uh, Sagitt uh, Sagittarius, Jupiter also rules the taboo. So she may be, you know, especially now, she may be the type of child who asks those kind of taboo questions, like, where do babies come from, you know, like, you know, she's not afraid to ask those questions, right, and as she gets older, you know, she's, you know, that's going to develop into an even more kind of deeper aspect, I, I guess, for her, it's gonna, you know, turn into something where she can utilize to actually um, ask deeper questions that maybe other people aren't willing to ask or something like that, so... Mercury and Sag can be a good placement. But see, see, I'm doing, this is me, my Mercury and Sag coming out. Going back to what I was saying, Mercury and Sag can, cannot be the best sometimes at focusing. And Mercury and Sag can sometimes not be the best at finishing things. They're really good at starting things, starting a lot of different things because they have so many different ideas. But they can sometimes have difficulty seeing everything to complete fruition, everything to complete, complete, right? So... That's something that um, 
it's going to need to be fostered within her is, is a need to, to see things to fruition, you know, to start things and to see it through. So very important. All right. So her Venus is an Aquarius and Venus rules how we approach love, how we approach relationships, uh, what we like to spend our money and our leisurely time doing. This is our hobbies. Um, you know, this is also the types of relationships and people that we attract. Okay. So Aquarius is ruled by Uranus and Saturn. So ne uh, Uranus, I was about to say Neptune. Uranus rules technology. It rules forward movement. It rules progression. It rules innovation. Okay. Um, Uranus uh, loves the unconventional. Now, it's interesting because Saturn is much more of a traditionalist. So, Aquarius is sometimes that kind of dichotomy going on too, naturally. Um, whereas Uranus wants to do, you know, Uranus wants to take risks. Uranus wants to, you know, um, strive towards the unconventional, strive towards the eccentric. Whereas Saturn is more like, you know, eh, I'm, I'd rather go the tra traditional route. I'd rather go the tried and true route. Um, you know, I'd rather go the route that it's guaranteed to me to, for me to get success or get what I want. So there's always that dichotomy going on. Now with Venus and Aquarius, that dichotomy um, gets even more intricate because this is the, you know, the chart, uh, the placement in our chart where, you know, love can be found, uh, you know, friendships can be found. So she may have unconventional relationships in terms of, you know, friendships and love. Now I know she's a child, so I guess I shouldn't go too deep into this. It feels kind of weird to go deep into it actually. But Venus and Aquarius is attracted to the unconventional. Venus and Aquarius is attracted to um, you know, the non-traditional, you know, so she may be very eccentric. You know, Venus is also our passion, you know, so, you know, the passion that we put into our work. Um, so she can do things in a maybe unconventional way. She can approach relationships in a very unconventional way, you know, um, so these are, um, great. Let's move on. So her Mars is in Virgo and Mars rules self-assertiveness, um, and things of that nature. So, <laughs> Uh, Mars also rules how we express our raw energy. So Virgo, um, once again, is ruled by Mercury. Now, whereas Mars is much more of a self-assertive, kind of move out of my way before I move you out of my way planet, Virgo is a much more of a, can you please move out of my way kind of planet? Um, Mercury, I mean. So, she may be someone who... When she does things, she definitely has a plan of action. Because remember, Virgos have a plan of action. They always have a plan of action when they implement something, when they do something. So she's definitely a planner, a doer, a, someone who thinks before acting, okay? Um, now, that can sometimes hinder her because um, Mars is more so about, you know, taking risks and not thinking too much, okay? Uh, Virgo, Mercury is a thinker. Mer Virgo, Mercury is a planner, you know, um, a methodical analyzer okay so not a bad placement but at times it's important to not overthink too much once again to the point of not acting so um let's just quickly move on to her pluto okay um actually no let's go to her jupiter so jupiter is you know our, our expansion of our expansion of knowledge what we like to um you know, what we like to learn about, how we like to expand our knowledge, you know, um, our ability to be tolerant of other people, different beliefs and ideologies. So her Jupiter is in Taurus, and Taurus is ruled by Venus. So Venus is all about, you know, friendship, romance, beauty, harmony. So when it comes to different ideologies, you know, she can be a bit idealistic, maybe. She can be um, maybe someone who kind of expects things or people to, to be a certain way, maybe at times and um can be a bit taken aback when things don't go her way can be you know um it, she can have trouble with with accepting certain things certain ideologies the way things are at times because Tauruses can be very stubborn um <clears throat> But nonetheless, Jupiter and Taurus can be a good placement when it comes to attracting friends because, you know, Taurus are very, can be very open-minded. Um, you know, Taurus is an earth sign, so they're also very practical in the way they approach friendships and the, the way they approach knowledge and expansion of knowledge. Now, Jupiter also rules travel, long-distance travel. So she may, um, actually may not enjoy long-distance traveling all the time because Tauruses like to be comfortable. Um, so if she does... it tend to travel a lot long distance she will comfort and comfortability is most important the hotel you know the, the, the mode of travel like everything has to be comfortable or she might be a little bit ornery okay so you know very interesting very great placement 
Now let's move on to Saturn, Saturn in Libra. Now Saturn, like I was saying, rules work work ethic, you know, the past, karma, debt, weight, illness, okay? This is also our career profession in society. Libra's ruled by Venus. So once again, that beauty, friendship, harmony aspect. So she, uh, whatever career she ends up pursuing, um, may... Um, may deal with beauty in some way, shape, or form. Like decorating, making things more beautiful, um, bringing beauty and harmony to the world in some way, shape, or form. Um, she's going to be someone who, you know, um, is known for bringing people together, is known for wanting people to come together, to work together towards a common goal. Um, you know, she's also someone who, when it comes to work, she likes to surround herself. I'm talking like she's actually... 20 years old or 30 years old but whatever um <laughs> who knows she might be working right now but when it comes to work she likes to or she will like to surround herself with with people that she has common values with some commonality with some type of friendship relationship already going because libra once again is all about you know it's ruled by venus so it's all about friendship and harmony and balance you know and things of that nature so very diplomatic as well in the workplace um you know she can be a very diplomatic employer right is right right wrong is wrong you know fair is fair um you know a very fair employee a very fair employer um has a very distinct um definition of what fair is to her in terms of work in you know society so very important placement okay don't want to really get into uranus or neptune let's move on down to pluto and Pluto, her Pluto's in Capricorn. So Pluto takes a couple years to orbit. Whenever it orbits into a new zodiac sign, it's actually a new generation. So it's interesting she's a part of the Pluto and Capricorn generation. So Pluto rules the subconscious. It rules the deep dark truths of a situation, place, or thing. All right. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Now, when it comes to the Pluto and Capricorn generation, these are the types of people who are definitely going to be, you know, hard workers, workaholics. Um, they're going to outwork <laughs> a lot of people, all right? Um, you know, these are the people who, they're the no excuses type. They're the type who um, can be very dictatorial, can be very fatherly almost. Because once again, Saturn rules the father. So these can be, you know, the disciplinarians. These can be the types of people who um, enact change, you know, um, change on a, on a law, on a government level, you know, these are the types of people who make stuff happen, you know, so, um, very important generation that she's coming from and kind of being ushered into, so, Blue Ivy, girl, you better work, I love your birth chart, okay, so, thank you guys for listening and watching, if you would like your own birth chart reading, definitely check, uh, out my services, I do regular, you know, individual birth chart readings, regular compatibility birth chart readings, where I look at the overall compatibility, including your asteroids, and your houses, first through twelfth house, and all that, um, but I also do love synastry, love compatibility readings, where I, I, you know, focus on the overall compatibility, but I mainly focus on, you know, the, um, the Venus aspects, the Mars aspects, you know, things of that nature, the Mercury aspects, um, the fifth house and the seventh house aspects. So, you know, um, it's really important, you know, that you kind of figure out what kind of birth chart you want prior to purchasing. So thank you guys for listening and watching. I also do tarot readings and messages from your spirit guide. So I would love to read for you. Check all of those things out on my website, lamartownsandtarot.com. Also, please check out my ebook. Okay. Namaste, love and light. Hey guys, thank you for listening and watching. Please hit the like button, share with your friends and your family, and also please subscribe, of course. And if you're interested in my ebook, check out my ebook, purchase it on my website or on Amazon. I would also love it if you would follow me on my social media, Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, thank you guys for listening and watching, and I'll catch you in the next video, alright?